you speak in the mic. Sure. Hello, everybody. Um, wow. Lots of people came. It's great. I'm really excited to show you um, the router. Oh, it's not on. Ooh, let me start this up. Should it be started? Oh, it says. One sec. All right. Uh, is it mirroring? Of course, everything is there. Uh, All right, there you go. Um, All right, 25 minutes. Everything the router can do in 25 minutes, right? All right, so we're plumbing the router. First, who am I? My name's Carl Lurch. Um, oh, known as Carl Lurch on IRC. Very imaginative. And um, I am an engineer yard employee. So. Um, as Ezra mentioned in his talk, um, some things that MERP strives to be is simple, simple, modular, flexible, and hackable. So I'm going to try to run through everything that you can do in the router. Well, okay, not everything, but a good chunk of everything you can do in the router, including um, how you can hack it, which is actually really cool. Um, so I'm going to assume everybody has built routes in Rails, so know the basics. Um, routing a request to a controller and all the parameters. So just to show some of the syntax, um, this will be in the router file if you build a new MERB app. It's just going to be a MERB router prepare block. So everything I'm going to be showing is pretty much going to be in there. Um, match sign up to controller users action new. Very basic route. Um, match sign up to users controller and the new action. <coughs> And we are going to name it sign up, and you can regenerate it. All right, moving forward. Routes with variables, also probably you would have expected this. Same syntax as in Rails. Um, build the route, set some placeholders in it, and um, the router will extract those parameters for accessing the controller. And you can regenerate it. Um, routes with conditions. I'm actually, you know, sneaking in some more uh, <coughs> features in here, just to show you that um, when pretty much in order to be flexible, you know, anything, any single method that's available when building routes, you can pass a block to it, and those settings will be um, applied to every route declared in that block. So here I'm setting match. I'm setting a prefix for every route declared in there to articles. Do with controller articles. So every route in that second block is going to have um, the controller set to articles and match the placeholder title. I'm setting a regular expression on the title to match it. And the next route, same format, but it doesn't have a condition on the placeholder. So that path, hello world, will be routed to the um, with title action and the second one with the ID. All right. Okay, so here, this is really cool. You can match, use any method on the request op, uh, object in to, uh, to route the, um, the request. So for example, here I'm saying domain, blog of awesomeness. Domain does not have any special meaning in the router. It's just saying take the value of that's returned by the method domain on the request object, which and is blog of, blog of awesomeness, and test that. So you can actually extend the router object, add your own custom methods, and it will work in here. So custom methods, whatever you want in there. Let's see. And yeah, just examples there. Let's see. So this is, I think a lot of people do this, the subdomain problem. Um, just you want to extract a value from 
the subdomain, which is just another method on the request object. So you can, the request is coming in, it has some arbitrary you know, value that's returned from the subdomain method. And we're saying, okay, we're gonna match the regular, use a regular expression to match it and extract the, fir the value of the first capturing parentheses to the parameter account. So when the request comes in and is passed through the router, there are actually two parts that happens. First, it goes through each route and it's going to check does the request match that route. And that's everything that's going to be defined in the match methods here is what tells the router how to match a route. Then the second part is extracting the parameters that are returned. So here I'm going to just extract the subdomain, you know, a value from the subdomain so that, I, so that I can return it to um, my controller and that will be available in the controller. All right. Starting to get a bit fancier. I think this is really cool. So when you're matching a path, um, you can wrap any bit of that path in a set of parentheses and that will tell the router that that section is optional. So, and you can nest them, like I'm showing here. So, pretty much any set of combinations, you know, articles, year, title will work. Articles, just title. Articles, year, month, title. And it's smart enough to actually, you can put those um, optional segments in the front of the path, in the end of the path, in any part. You can also put it in a match block that's at the top, the very top of the router file, and include every route in it as an optional segment that is matched. Like, um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And generation still works. It, when you generate the route back, it will check to make sure that all the, param the necessary parameters are there and put them in the right spot. All right, let's get a bit fancy. Not only can you specify um, segments as optional, you can add regular expressions to match it, which will override the, by default, a name segment will be everything between two slashes or a slash and a period and a slash and a semicolon, I think, but a certain set of characters. But you can override that regular expression, and here I'm just saying match absolutely anything, but it's at the start, so, and it wraps in a set of parentheses. So it is optional and it's gonna to try to match the file part first. So those are some examples of paths and what it matches to. And you can still generate that route. So I've actually seen a lot of router files where about five, six routes listed one after the other can actually be expressed as one route. A lot more concise, a lot pretty flexible, I like to believe. And just to show it, like, this is actually extracted from the MERB code. This is how I implement the default route. It's just a combination of a match and a two. Controller action ID format. And, oh, all right. I think that's awesome. So, all right. Everybody, I'm sure, knows this. And, oh, and if you actually look at the source code, for the most part, it's just a, a set of match to name segments. So it's, just using um, pr the features I've showed before. And you can nest them, generate it, same. Nest multiple times, I mean, comments, you know, articles as many comments, songs as many, as many comments. And generate it, wait, okay, I'm, I made that ugly on purpose. <laughs> um, but I'm just illustrating that to n generate the route, you, you need to know, because they're multiple um, comment routes, either article as many comments, so if the commentable is an article, generate the article one, anyway. That's pretty annoying. I'm guessing you're expecting something better on the next slide. What about that? All right, so when you're building your routes, it's when you're building a resource route, I actually try to guess the class and it's overridable if it's not standard. And 
So when you use the, the resource method, is actually, it's just gonna be a shortcut to picking the route and rendering it, so um, generating it. So all, this, all the features that are before, um, that I showed before still work. So for example, you can match, you can wrap resource routes around a prefix that has some placeholder in it and it still works the same. And I'm actually showing something, you know, I'm slipping in another feature. So when generating that route, like a task route, it knows that there is a requirement for a project parameter. And in the first version, I mean, first call, I'm not specifying it, but it knows it needs one. So it's gonna pull it from the current set of parameters. I mean, a lot of the time, you're just re-putting the same names over and over again. That got annoying, so I did that. And you can override it, obviously. Awesome. <laughs> this will clean up a lot of code. All right, so friendly URLs. Another thing, um, yeah, ID might not be what you want to use as an identifier. A number, I don't know. A lot of times, name might be a better version, so I accept the name. Um, identify to override what you set. So it's going to, what this says is, identify the object by calling the name method. So it's just gonna call it whatever method you want, throw it in there. And it actually works with an array too if you're using data map with uh, multi-key, um, multi-column keys. So I'm not gonna show that though. And identify works as a block too. So this is, I actually use the identify method in the, o, uh, in the plugins for the ORM. Um, it's going to set the default if you're using active record is going to say identify active record base with ID and data mapper with ID, but you can override that. And resource routes are anything special, so that you could actually identify um, any kind of object with any kind of route, just tell it which method to call. It knows, it can keep track of inheritance, so it will pick the most um, specific class out of the whole set of inheritance. and. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. That's, this is how I segment features, because I gotta go through it and really fast. Okay, I'm trying to get to the cool stuff at the end. So reader, I can like, this is, this is going to be maybe, this is a situation. Okay, I did this not too long ago. I want to, I'm decided I wanna change my um, structure for displaying articles. This is what I had before. Our, how I did it in Rails, and I thought that was kind of ugly, you know, the trick one, two, three, and just pulled by ID, and I decided to create a nicer string for the URL, and um, generate from that. I mean, pull, pull the article from that. So that, this is what I'm gonna try to solve. How am I going to um, redirect the legacy URLs to the new version? Should I handle in the controller? Okay, that would work. Just match both formats to one um, one action, but that would put be putting router code into the controller, which I guess it works. But why not keep it all together in the router file? Should we try to do the regular expressions? Uh, maybe, but. I'm sure there's gonna be false positives and route stuff wrong, that won't work. Or, you can extend matching in the router file and add your own logic to handle it. So this is deferred blocks, lets you do pretty much anything when you're matching the route. It takes the request, current request object and the current set of match uh, parameters for that path, and I'm going to say, well, if the article, if I can match that to a new, um, new format by pulling off the URL column, um, then the route matches, return the current parameters, and I'm going to act, and you can modify the parameters, which will be available then in the action by just doing that. Um, I'm going to stash the article in the parameters so that I don't have to look it up again. I am going to then check, if that doesn't match, go to the next version, um, try to find it by the old 
the old format. If I do find it, let's redirect it. So you can redirect in the router. Now, the thing about redirecting here is that it's not even going to get to the controller. It's not going to instantiate a controller. You're just going to say, this is as close to the rack request that you're going to get. So just if you want to finish, you want to return right away, you can redirect right there. Otherwise, return false, which is just going to say, don't match this route. So keep checking the other routes. Yeah. You can, that's pretty much, you can do anything you want in there. And guess what? Maybe you want to do authentication right there. You have access, because you have access to the request object, you have access to the session. You have access to any custom method you add on the request object. You can do whatever you want, plug it, write plugins. That This is actually a great way for anybody to write plugins. I don't really expect every single router file to have you know, 30 blocks, deferred blocks, and that's probably not what you want to go for. There's a, you got access to a lot of power here, but the way I think this is going to be used the most is for plugin developers. And there's actually, okay, this isn't the actual MERB auth plugin because it wouldn't fit on a slide, but this is, might be a way to go around doing it. Let's define a method called protect that we can use in the router file. It takes a block so that we can wrap a whole bunch of routes around it. Define our proc that takes the request and the params and do whatever logic we want in here. So the MERB auth is actually going to do a lot fancier stuff, but it's going to authenticate the request. And if it doesn't, it's going to re return wherever. And then we'll defer it. So that's calling a built-in method that just says add this block to the set of deferred blocks. And yeah, maybe. That's so plugin developers, do this. All right. So now I managed to leave time for questions. Just ran through everything. And I will be around also if you have further questions. I'm on RC. So I went through this really fast. Questions? If you're nesting routes, uh, do you have to specify the controller uh, for the nested, or excuse me, nesting resources routes? Uh, do you have to specify the controller as, uh, say, I have comments on uh, sites? Do I have to specify the controller for the N word as sites slash comments uh, specifically? Uh, if I'm putting the comments controller inside of a module called sites? No. <laughs> it's going to namespace everything. I left out all the namespacing features because, well, I mean, it works roughly the same as Rails. But um, the advantage, I mean, no. The short answer is no. <laughs> it's flexible enough to know what, more or less what you're thinking. And if it guesses wrong, you can override pretty much every setting granularly. There are a lot of, I actually added an options method which lets you override every single granular setting. Um, for example, the name prefix. You can only change the name, the, name pre, the prefix for your named routes in a block. You can only change the module that your um, controllers are in using controller prefix. So every setting is actually granular. Hi. Um, going back to the RESTful routing, mm -hmm. I was wondering if there's been any consideration for having a fallback um, delete action, uh, like a get for deleting, if you're doing like unobtrusive uh, post requests for doing deletes? Um, yes, it is in there. Where is it? Probably skimmed through that fast, but the very last one. So we actually add a way for you to get, you know, get delete, get a confirmation, do JavaScript, um, unobtrusive JavaScript call, whatever you want there. And I didn't add it because I thought it would take a bit longer, but um, you can add whatever 
extra methods on extra resource methods on the re, uh, resource like collection resource um, collection and member kind of like Rails, but there's also you can also route. I mean, yeah. So you can add whatever method extra methods you want on it. Can you explain the difference between a delete and a destroy action? So the delete is if you want to uh, get a confirmation first. For example, like send a link to delete and then are you sure you want to delete this? Or if you want to, um, it won't actually delete, but it's a way to get, you know, first get a confirmation before you actually delete. It's analog as edit. Mm -hmm. It's analog as I'll edit. So delete is to destroy as um, edit is to update. So we've got a guy on IRC, IRC who wants a question. Uh, he's asking any ideas on how to make the router extensible? Deferred blocks. <laughs> you can do anything. Where was it? Did I go too far? There we go. Whoops. I'm extending the router. That method protect will be available to all the routes. So I'm just extending it right there. I mean, any, any kind of code you want. So in your fixed routing example, you had two database lookups for every single route match mm -hmm. before you even got to the code. Yeah. How does that work with something that is getting a lot of traffic? No matter what, that I mean, whether you put that, um, well, first of all, it's a legacy URL, so I mean, th that's probably not the best way to do it. It fit my slides. That's not really the actual code. But um, no matter what, if you put it in the controller, you'd still have those database lookups. There's no real way to differentiate it. A better way probably would be to first try to guess the pattern and then make sure. Well, you could, you could also like, save yourself from instantiating the whole controller and doing all the callbacks yeah. there by doing one look up in the router. Exactly. Yeah. Ex so if it's, yeah, that's one advantage of putting, putting it there. It? Yeah. So one advantage to doing it there is that you're, if you redirect, it will not actually instantiate a controller object. So you're going to save yourself from doing all the overhead from a full request. Yeah, even in that case, there were a couple of tricks that he blazed over pretty quickly that made it not as egregious as perhaps it seemed. Let me put it back. Um, Where was it? Um, I think it's further. There we go. So first of all, um, he put the new URL first. So in most cases, there's actually only going to be one lookup. Mm -hmm. And since he put the article in the params, the controller doesn't have to go look it up. So actually, in most cases, with the new API, there's still only going to be one a d database lookup. But you're doing it in the router, right? Um, yeah, you're just doing it in the router, which is the right place for route logic. Um, I just also want to say you blazed through the request, the fact that you can do like subdomain arrow, whatever. Yeah. Um, you can also, you can extend the request object with whatever methods you want. So if you want to add special, um, some special condition to the request object, you can add a method and then the, you know, colon, my special method, arrow, some string. We'll just check to see if the result of doing request dot, your special method, it matches. So you can actually extend the router through the request object also. I think you had a slide. Mm-hmm. Mm, well, I didn't actually extend it, but where was it? Further, further, da 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 da. Where was it? Somewhere near. There, that one? Uh, yeah, so that's subdomain. That subdomain over there is actually a built in MERB thing, but you could have your own. That just does request.subdomain matches that reg regular expression. You could also do you know, whatever you want and then use either a regular expression or a string, and it'll check to see if you do a regular expression, if it matches that. And if it's a string, if it is that string. So that is another avenue of extending the router.
Can you just go back to identify and show us how you do the, the friendly URLs? Because that was really quick, and, but really cool. Where was it? Is it before or after? Oh, there we go. So, yeah. The trick is it doesn't have to, I mean, we're not tying it to an ORM class. We're, we don't have a method that you have to implement, for, like, to param. You can just add, and another thing is that it's, if you do it in the block, it's not global to your entire route. So like, in one section, you might want to use one method, like the, pretty, the login, and another place, you might want to use ID. So though that information is going to be tied to the actual routes as opposed to application-wide. If you go back to the previous slide, here you say identify name. Can I use a method on my model? Yeah, also? that is the name method on the model. So it could be anything you implement on the model. All right, thank you.